In this video, I tour a van that was meticulously designed and exquisitely built. This van has almost every high-end option available, and while most people can't or don't want to invest quite this much in their van, if you want to see all the high-end options all in one place so you can pick and choose what you'd like to incorporate into your build, check out this van. And before we dive in, I just want to invite all the women watching to join our Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can find the link in our Facebook group, Gal Adventures. Also, if you like this video, it really helps others find it if you hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Uh, my name is Chad Quinn. Uh, social media, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Bearded Van Life and Bearded Image. Um, I am a, a design consultant and photographer, professional photographer, working full time from the road. So I live in Althea uh, full time. Uh, she is a Mercedes 2022 Sprinter 170 extended for my core. Uh, she's a monster. Uh, it was designed by myself. Uh, I do interior design and space planning for a living. So all the interior was drawn up by me, all the selections by myself. And then Ross Monster Bands out of Longmont, Colorado uh, did the build for me. So they did a fantastic job. He had sand up good things about Ross Monster Band. Come my on aesthetic in. was kind of my big thing. Uh, and then it's very specific layout to me personally. So it's not a layout maybe for everybody, but it's a layout really designed about how I live and how I work. Both Mercedes Sprinter seats swivel, and then I have a Lagoon uh, mount here uh, to service both uh, seats when, they, when they're when they turned around. So this is kind of for guests or friends, and then I often find my seat sitting uh, in the desk uh, behind you. I'm not sure who manufactured this, but obviously just an upper shelf, more storage, really great uh, feature, most fans, you know, pretty common feature. Um, but then a lot of them have just a, you know, rod and, and, a, and a way to drape just straight across. But because both seats swivel, we actually found this, uh, this is Canyon Adventure Vans. Um, it's a feature they've put in a lot of the Revels and some of the smaller Sprinter Vans. So we actually just bought the product and then kind of bolted it to this thing. And now when the seats are swiveled, you can put the blackout shades up and it's really great. So I don't have to worry about shades for the driver, passenger and front windshield. I literally just pull these curtains and it's really great. So very easy to open and kind of slide back. They tie back, which is really great. And then you want to put them together. There's a nice little magnet at the bottom and they just kind of snap. So they actually hold back light really well. I don't even need you know, front covers for the windows. We have a very large fridge and freezer. So it's an Isotherm Cruise 200. It's a extremely large fridge, uh, which is great. But then kind of the coup de gras is the dedicated freezer. So having ice cream, having ice, having frozen you know fish and meat, it's definitely a, a bonus in the van world. I use a product for my sink called Kraus. They're a product that I've put in every interior design renovation that I've ever done. So faucet, um, soap dispenser, 18 inch stainless steel sink. It's, and then this little really cool um, kind of mat that goes over top of the sink. It's a, it's a fantastic product. Two burner induction is my cooking surface. There's no gas or propane in the van. So that was a very specific choice on my end. Upper cabinets. These first two mainly are food storage for me. Um, so really great, you know, on uh, on actuators. So with the push buttons um, from the green world. And then maybe one of my other features, favorite features of the van is we did a full size trash can for the van, which trash is usually an afterthought. And it was very high on my list to have a legit full size trash can in the van. 
So water in the van, uh, obviously with the sink and the shower, and we'll get to the shower, but um, I've got 40 gallons of fresh water on board. So quite a bit of water, which is really great and necessary for the shower. So we'll be more detailed about the shower, but the uh, sink and the shower are tied into a gray water tank of 17 gallons underneath the van. Um, and uh, the gray water tank is on a push button uh, pneumatic valve. So from inside the van, I can you know release the gray water, um, dump it very easily um, wherever I'm at in a safe location, uh, and then yeah, close it from inside the van. So uh, it's really efficient and uh, and easy to uh, to dispose of gray water. When we did the layout again, space planning is kind of what I do for a living. So it was really important to me to understand where things were located and why. So every van tour that I've ever seen, the shower is always on this side of the van. To me, as an interior designer space planner, it always felt like an obstruction. Like this is a small space. So how do I make 80 square feet feel bigger? Especially having a massive shower in the van. So my solution was always put it on the other side and then find a way to create a volume of space here that makes the van feel bigger. So having basically no interruption all the way to the back of the van on this side, in my opinion, makes it feel larger. So the other thing is we found the dimension between the wheel well and the front door at 38 inches. That's where the shower was gonna go. It was obvious. So I have a 38 by 24 inch shower. It is massive, um, but it's a full wet room. Um, I have an airhead composting toilet that I absolutely love. Um, easy to clean, easy to change, very efficient. Um, it's a very small footprint. So I leave it in there when I shower, um, which is great. Um, I have a full sliding door for the shower as well. Um, pretty common. And then really what makes the shower uh, is the shower head. Um, so the Nibia shower head is just super efficient. They claim, I think, a 50% water savings per standard shower head. So being able to travel on the road full time and shower two, three, four times a week is unusual in the van world. And it's really, really nice to have. So yeah, can't say enough things, great things about having a full time shower in the van. The whole concept of the van, again, from a design aesthetic was going to be super clean and modern contemporary. It's kind of my style. Um, the white Corian countertops, solid surface countertops, you know, we did the little detailed edges with the waterfall edge around all the countertops. So I didn't want any light switches in the van. This is called the Firefly system. Um, pretty much the brains of the van. Um, everything is run off of this. So full, you know, autonomy with light switches, um, kind of a master on off switch, um, can kind of see my, my tank levels. Um, can turn all any systems on and off that I want so it's a it's a very efficient system and you don't have to worry about crazy backlit buttons <laughs> when you do a light switch in a van so that was you know I've heard horror stories about people installing light switches and then them being backlit and being on all night long and having to cover them with random items and I didn't want that so and then some very strategic plugs placed with USB-C USB-A um, uh, kind of all throughout the van so um, can charge lots of gear as a photographer I'm always charging camera batteries or other things and then again my job uh, I work full-time from the road so having a dedicated desk again was one of the biggest important things for me in the van design um, so we actually ordered another seat from Mercedes. So this is a factory seat from Mercedes and then kind of custom built a setup, uh, to fit myself. So literally this is where I sit and hang out and work and it fits me dimensionally perfectly. And yeah, I get a lot of work done here. I can sit here for six, eight hours at a time and just crank out work. So it works really well. So the last cabinet in the upper is really, we call it kind of the tech cabinet. Um, it's where I've actually been able to put like a lot of my charging things. I have kind of an anchor charging base here where I can charge a lot of stuff. The other key thing is my Starlink uh, router sits here. Um, it's hardwired into the roof uh, where the satellite sits. So full-time integrated Starlink is a game changer. If you're in van life, if you're thinking about van life, 
Starlink is the way to go. Also inside this cabinet, this is the button to dump my gray water. So this is the little button that I push. It's really great. The other thing in here is called my aqua hot system. So this is uh, my heat and hot water integrated into one system. So it's somewhat of a new product, um, kind of unique to this fan that maybe isn't uh, normal for an aqua hot product is we have three separate heating zones in the van. So I have a dedicated space for the garage. I have a heat vent directly under the uh, desk, and then I have a heat vent directly under the passenger seat in the front. The unique thing about AquaHot is you can turn them on and off independently. I can change the temperatures of each zone independently. So being able to kind of really customize this is pretty amazing. So in the winter time, I expect as I be, will be skiing anywhere and everywhere this winter, I'll heat the garage to keep the batteries warm. And then when I'm in the van, I'll heat this space. So having that flexibility is really a game changer. And then basically it's a one button push to turn it on. And literally if I jump in the shower right now, I have instant hot water, which is amazing. So I imagine coming home from a long day of skiing, being able to jump in the van, have instant hot water, take a hot shower, is gonna be pretty awesome. So the back half of the van or behind the, the shower, um, we did some cabinets. Um, this is kind of just a hanging closet, um, mirror for the beard, uh, <laughs> it's how I'm known. That's just a really great storage space for anything hanging. Winter time, it's, you know, uh, ski jacket, puffies, that type of thing. And then as a photographer on the road, um, it was super important to me. I have a full size safe in the van. It is 80 pounds. It's bolted to the frame of the van. Good luck trying to get that out. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. So, but it holds all my gear um, and is, uh, you know, gives me peace of mind when, uh, when I'm not in Althea. So yeah, it's great. So all the latches in the van, they're kind of from the marine world or the boat world. Uh, most latches you see are round. Um, this is uh, the designer in me, um, and I searched kind of long and hard to find rectangular or, or square ones. And so this is the first time my van builders kind of put these in, but they're super efficient. Um, you know, they make sure everything's closed. The other reason why these were selected um, was this walkway is quite narrow. So even if you do like a small handle, it sticks out a quarter inch. A half inch in the van world a half inch is a big deal it sounds silly um, especially when you're space planning but when you're space planning every inch counts in 80 square feet and it was very important for me so that this be very flush and I had as wide a space as I could walk down so one of my other favorite features in the van and this is something that Ross Monster uh, is just there's they're great at it period um, is their lighting package so We've got the full circular kind of dome style lights, which are pretty common in the vans um, down the middle, but then they do an above cabinet, they do a below cabinet, and then they do a floor toe kick. So the under cabinet, which is really great, the above cabinet is just a cool highlight. And then the toe kick on the floor, especially at night, is, is really great. The standard 170 is uh, the other size Mercedes makes. The extended is just 18 additional inches on the back end of the 170. So the bed is very large, which also makes the garage very large, which we'll get to later. But I do have flares on both sides. Um, I can sleep this way as almost a queen size bed, and then I can sleep lengthwise almost as a king size bed. So it is a massive uh, space to sleep. I have a small 24 inch TV right here on the wall. So great to watch movies. Um, I have a full integrated Starlink setup. So again, we'll see that on the roof. Uh, and then this is where I basically keep all my clothes. Anything that's not hanging just goes in these little bins. And then yeah, all my clothes basically just sit right here. So all the walls and all the ceiling is a Duramax. Uh, I think it's a cool gray fabric. Um, super heavy duty, uh, easy to clean, really durable. Um, and then we just kind of very strategically placed kind of these wood panels to kind of ha hide some of the seams um, as we laid this fabric up on top of the ceiling. So yeah, all have lock wool uh, insulated. So the van stays super cool in the summer and haven't put Althea in the winter yet, but uh, 
wherever it's snowing heaviest this winter is where she'll be parked. So we're gonna test out uh, her in the, uh, in the cold conditions. Above the bed is a uh, Nomadic 3000. So it's the 12 volt uh, AC unit, which is super efficient. I can run it for five, six, seven hours in you know crazy heat in Phoenix, Arizona in 100 degrees. That was operating and it was really great. So I have 600 lithium amp hours, um, a full Victron electrical system. I've got a 3000 watt inverter and um, we actually just changed the solar setup. Uh, um, I don't have a lot of solar. One, because the electrical system is so large, I would need, you know, hundreds, if not close to a thousand watts to make it comparable. So my goal with solar was to just try and offset maybe my daily use and try and be net zero throughout the day. The night, I'm gonna lose some power. It is what it is. But during the day, if I could offset kind of my net use, I'd be good. So. We've actually taken everything off the roof. I had solar panels on the roof before, and we've done a plug system on the rear panels of the van, which we'll look at. And I use uh, Goal Zero uh, 100 watt panels that I place on the ground uh, as my solar panels. We bought the van as a brand new, I say we, I always talk in we, everybody always asks me that. It's me and Althea, we're a partnership. Uh, we bought the van, uh, it's a 2022 brand new from Sprinter, from Mercedes. Um, so we bought it as a shell, as a cargo van. Um, no windows, no nothing, just came as a steel cargo van. Um, and then, yeah, did the full outfit from Ross Monster Van. So I'm um, not gonna give the exact numbers, but uh, Althea is north of, of 200K. Um, you know, it's there's very few things that are missing on this van. Um, she's truly custom. She's truly kind of one-off. It's all the selections and finishes that I wanted. Um, you know, picked very specific things to fit my lifestyle and to fit uh, what I thought would be a great build. And, you know, she's fully capable of going anywhere and staying off grid for a very long time. And, and that was the point. Um, that was the whole goal of the design was to be able to go and stay anywhere, uh, stay in the woods for a very long time uh, or in the mountains for a very long time. And how long have you been traveling in? I'm new to van life. Um, so I've been full time since May 1st. So, uh, but uh, I've put almost 16,000 miles on the van since May 1st. So I have done my fair bit of traveling. And uh, that was the point. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to stress about traveling. I want to go and see places and experience things that um, I maybe wasn't, ex you know, able to do so prior. Uh, it's why I have her. So literally, I get to go uh, and see some things that uh, and experience places that I've never seen before. So yeah, it's been amazing so far. That's awesome. All kinds of exterior features in the van. Um, we'll highlight some of them. The suspension is in a full agile rip kit. So it's a two and a half inch lift. Um, full suspension, uh, upgraded suspension. The side steps are from Rome built. The front, the hood, the grill, the bumper, and all of the side rocker panels are uh, Linex. So Linex USA, it's a great company. It's all the stuff you see in truck bed liners. Um, we sprayed everything with that. So it's a super durable material rocks you could take a screwdriver to it and not scratch it so it's really great the wheels and tires are new alvans uh, talon wheels they are incredible i cannot say enough good things about these wheels althea is a very heavy rig um, and that was a big concern of ours when you're close to ten thousand pounds or more having really good wheels and tires is necessary um, in terms of its drive quality um, and going off road. So these wheels from Alvance, the new Talons are indestructible. They ride beautifully. Um, I can't say enough good things about them. Everybody in the van world, most everybody, uh, carries Max Tracks. Um, this is a pretty common product uh, that everybody has. We used them yesterday to get somebody unstuck here at Descend as we're standing in sand. Um, but Ross Monster Vans, my van builder, has built this product. This is a product that if you're a DIY wire, you're creating your own rig, you can buy this directly from Ross Monster on their website. You can put it on yourself. Um, but it's a happy hour table, basically. Um, 
It's a pretty simple way to enjoy some drinks or happy hour stuff and uh, store your and take your mat tracks with you. The solar setup in the van, again, I think I touched on it earlier. Super simple. I'm just trying to cover up my daily use in the van, basically. Um, my fridge running all day, the Starlink on all day, that type of stuff. So instead of having solar panels on the roof, which is too valuable a real estate for me, there was other things that were more important for me up there. We did two charge ports on this side. So it's a separate charge controller here. And then I have two charge ports on the other side. So I can put these goal zero panels kind of anywhere, rotate them as the sun moves. Um, and they kind of cover my daily use. Uh, I can get upwards of, I think, uh, four panels in here. I think I can daisy chain a couple of them. So I could probably get, you know, four to 600 watts of solar if I want. Um, right now it's just 200 watts and it's fine for the moment. So I'll probably upgrade in the future. I have a Rocky Mount swivel dual bike rack. Um, we've got the Alvans uh, Sherpa carrier with the Alvans uh, medium sized box. Um, on it is a Demos shovel, which is actually sitting right here. We used this to get somebody unstuck yesterday. We dug them out. Can't say enough good things about the Demos shovel. It's awesome. Um, we have the Alvans rear tire carrier. And then this is why she's called Althea. I'm a very large Grateful Dead fan, have been my whole life. I have the Grateful Dead tattooed on me. Um, so we replaced the Mercedes logo with the Steal Your Face uh, Dead logo. It's, it's actually 3D printed. Uh, it's a custom kind of setup from someone on Etsy uh, out of Great Britain. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. And then we've replaced the side logos with um, some Grateful Dead logos. Her name is on the side, Althea. And then on this side, uh, it just says the Grateful Dead with another little logo. So very small touches, but they're very personal to me. So that's how Althea got her name. For me, it was super important to have a big garage. Um, I might mountain bike in the summer, I ski in the winter, and I carry a lot of stuff. And that was super important. So I have two 500 pound slides, um, full pull outs. So these pull all the way out um, and then we set them up with six Yeti Go boxes are capable of being stored here. Um, super accessible. I can take them all out. I can leave them all in. I can get access to gear really easily. Um, and then yeah, everything just slides away. On this side is just a mount for the bike. So I can get two bikes on here, which is pretty great. Um, again, super easy access. Um, I've also got a park tool set up on the side. So this is built into the door. Um, I can work on the bike. I can clean the bike, maintain the bike. It's uh, a really great setup. Um, other features, we've got full outdoor shower uh, in the rear. It also works as a great bike cleaning. I can clean the bike and make sure it's clean before it goes back in, which is really great. Um, in the summertime, I put actually just a little shoe rack in here. Um, it carries all my bike helmets, my hiking gear, kind of all that stuff. Um, in the wintertime, this actually comes out. And on the wall, I have a full ski rack set up that I can hold three sets of skis. And all my winter gear goes in and, uh, yeah, ready for the change of seasons. Just super simple lights. Got a light in the garage. Um, so if you're packing in late at night, you can turn that on. I've got a little light switch here and there's two KC lights above that are blindingly bright. Uh, you have no issues in the dead of night, which is really great. So um, got a little plug here, USB. So uh, some of my bike components are electric, so I'm charging some of those. This is an e-bike, so we have it tied into the electrical system so I can plug my bike in here as well. So it charges while I'm driving on the road, which is really great. Um, yeah, it's uh, a garage that was built for outdoor activities and, you know, being able to hold and, uh, and store gear appropriately. That's what I wanted. This is the water side of the van. It's 40 gallons of fresh water, three stage filtration from clear source, a fantastic product. And then also this is where the aqua hot system sits. So that's my heat and hot water, uh, combined in one unit, a very efficient setup. Um, the water fill is on the outside of the van. It's locked. No one can access it. The surface that we're driving on is pretty much sand. 
so airing down your tires and being capable of driving on a, a soft surface was a big thing. So um, fully capable of airing down the tires, that's easy. But airing back up, there's a full ARB onboard air compressor in the front and the rear of the van. So I'm sure I will be airing up not only my tires, but many of my friends' tires as well as we all leave uh, Ascend. It's really been great to be able to have that uh, flexibility. And also I use it for bike tires. I use it for some other things. So uh, it's really great uh, having that just built into the van. Rooftop deck was super important to me. I wanted a space to be able to one, shoot photography, two, just hang out with a chair and table and now actually I sleep up here. It's big enough to easily put, you know, a blanket down, pillows, and, uh, and I actually plan on sleeping up here tonight. The Yakima box is great. It's gear storage, it's additional paddleboard, backpacks, other stuff. Um, but the main stuff up here is the Rome Adventure box that we just installed, uh, which is really great because it houses uh, a dedicated space for the Starlink satellite and for my solar panels. Inside, we just put a small foam piece there. Um, my van builder custom did a uh, pull mount for me on the back of my roof rack. And then all I do is snap the satellite on the pole and it's live and good to go. So easily broken down, I can put it in here. The other half of the box houses the goal zero panels that we saw on the floor. So I can put those panels away, super easily stowable. Same thing again with the Starlink unit. It was literally built and purchased to house the Starlink unit. I had so much fun exploring Chad's exceptional van and I was so happy he was willing to share it. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you're a woman who would like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, where I organize our weekly Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.